Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Ethosystems Sage Intact webinar. This is going to be a walkthrough of the of Sage Intact product. My name is Michael Pernay. I'm the VP of Sales over at Ethosystems. Glad that everybody could join. There is a, an option for you to put questions in uh, in the chat. I will do my absolute best to monitor those. So as you have questions, please feel free to you know please feel free to throw those in there so that we can uh, you know get those answered. But everybody should be seeing my screen, and this is Sage Intact. You may notice that I'm in a web browser. The beautiful thing about it is because Sage Intact is a cloud product. So you just go to a website and you are able to access the solution. Also, something to point out here is I have it open up on my home screen. What's nice about the home screen is whenever there's a release, which there are four every year, you are going to be able to see all the release highlights. So I can actually click this video link right here and see a detailed highlight video, which is done by Julie Adams, who is the VP of product for Sage Intact. And she does a quick highlight release of everything that was that has come out. It's also hyperlinked down at the bottom for you to then see everything that was a part of it. If you wanna to get to a specific area. Also to see a more detailed release notes, you're gonna have the ability you're gonna have the ability to come into the full release notes area. And now this can get you to even more granular detail on what was included and then get you into specific videos on those areas and everything that's around it. So it's a really nice tool for people uh, specifically around release notes because there are four a year. There's usually a lot that goes on inside of these, You know, usually a lot that goes on inside of these releases. So we want to make sure that people have all that information and are able to, you know, able to see everything and know exactly what's come in the newest release. Also, you, you can have multiple entities inside of Sage Intact. What's nice about this is I'm right now in the top level. And if I want to switch that entity, then all I need to do is click up here and I can then select the entity that I would like to go in. You can be in multiple entities at one time. So if I want to still remain in my top level here and go through any of my applications, you know, ARAP, so on and so forth. From the top level perspective, I could certainly do that and do the same through the Timberline uh, general contractor entity as well. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and pull up a dashboard. We have a few different dashboard options, but this first one I'm gonna pull up will be the project performance dashboard. So this is gonna be my project performance dashboard. What's really nice about this is you could have it filtered many different ways and also you're going to be able to see these live tiles with some quick indicators of how they're performing but firstly with the filters is i can filter this by date if i'd like it to be as of today i can do it just as of today leave it blank that's how it'll work also if i have multiple locations or departments something along the anything along those lines inside of my instance i can then filter it based off that specifically so if i want to see all this specifically for my beaverton location i can do so and then also I can filter it even further by project type, you know, restaurant, retail, tenant improvements, warehouses, by project manager. Um, I can also do it by a job specific. So there's a decent amount of options here on this filter, but what we'll do is we're gonna actually just do it. We're gonna do it for the whole entity and we'll do it for June of 2022. So what you'll see here is the dashboard updates. So everything updates based off of the date of June 1st, 2022. So you'll notice that everything is now different. Those where we had those red arrows down, we now have green arrows up. So I can get a quick look at my project revenue, project costs, project profit margin, then the profit margin percentage, active jobs, month-to-day project revenue, month-to-day project costs, month-to-day project profit margin, monthly project uh, margin percentage and then new jobs for the month. What else is nice about this too, is you can then drill down directly into these. And what this will do is it's gonna pull me into my costs. So I'll see all the costs that were associated for this month. I'll be able to see those and see how we got to that $681,837. So it's a vast majority of our subcontract. There's some other and labor in here. So if I wanted to then drill further, I can then get into the labor that was in here as well. And now, I'm able to see the department. I can see the project wage allocations. I can see weekly labor burdens that were applied here. I see all this information. So just very quickly, very easily, I'm able to drill down 
into those cost, you know, into those costs, into those cost reports right from the dashboard. What I also like to point out is our project overview report. So what's nice about this is it's going to show me my original contract approved changes. So we can cert you can certainly have change requests in here, but if they haven't been approved, it's not going to hit this report because we don't want it to hit this report just yet. We want it to be approved in order to hit it. So then we can see our approved changes and then what that brings our new contract total to. So our most accurate or most recent contract. You'll then see your budget and estimate, what your estimated gross profit is, estimated profit margin, your commitments, billings, costs, gross profit. And then you'll see what's been spent versus what's been billed. And what's nice about this too with the reports, you know, again, it's just some quick, nice indicators to grab your eyes. So if you have anything that's, if you have any projects that aren't performing well, you're going to get that big red bar, be able to notice it right away very easily, very quickly. Again, there's full drill down capabilities here. So if I want to drill into my commit, my committed costs for the quick bowls in Portland, I can drill into it and I can actually see the breakout here of these subcontracts. And sorry, just move this a little more over here, condense it, lovely. So now I can see all the subcontracts and all the subcontract lines that made up the subcontract commitments. And then I can also see all the purchasing and all the materials lines that made up the materials commitments. Gives you my total by type or by cost, you know, by cost group. So subcontract materials and then my totals. We'll also be able to break out this very similar report, but we can do this by project manager as well. So we could see everything. So I got Doug Moffat in here and we'll see all the projects for Doug because Doug's the only one that's got projects going on so far through June 1st, 2022. So I can see all of Doug's projects and then again, break it out, be the same information that we see up there. We can then break this out by type. So I do restaurants, hotels, and warehouses thus far for this entity. So I can now break out those projects and see how we're performing those. If I have a backlog report, I can actually show my backlog, which I don't have that right now. But if I change this to as of today and we apply that, I can then see my backlog report. So this will be my current projects and then my backlog projects. Now I can see those two that I have in my backlog. We also can show project profitability by type. So I can show here my based on restaurants, hotels, warehouses, and tenant improvements, what our profitability looks like from a dollar perspective and from a percentage perspective. And then if I'm doing multiple types of projects, so this is also by restaurants. So if I got multiple restaurants that I'm doing, I can now break it out by each restaurant type. So as you can see, I mean, there's a lot of filtering capabilities. We can slice and dice the data, how you'd like to get you the exact, you know, get you the reporting that you want to see. There is project profitability report as well. So this will be, you know, it's very similar to those other reports. This is just at a pro per project level, but we've already gotten that information from the above reports. That's why this one is minimized. Then for those that are a little bit more visual that prefer graphs, we can pull up graphs here for you. And you can see a project margin, uh, project margin by customer. And this all, all of this information as well, this is drill downable. So we can see it for Star Enterprises by our customer. We could see the revenue and then we can see the uh, revenue and then we would see the project costs. And then it's gonna give us what the margin is. And again, you see the hyperlinks here, all drill downable, easy to get into. Now, this is another report that I'm a big fan of. This is our cost overview report. And what the cost overview report is, it's run via our interactive custom report writer, which is something that at Ethos Systems we use heavily to create a bunch of custom reports for clients. But what I like about this report is it's filterable on the report level by job. So what it'll do for you, it's going to give you my, it's going to break out by cost code and by cost type. So cost code and cost type. And then it's gonna tell me original estimate, if we had any revisions, approved changes, total estimate, original committed, what our approved changes were to any of our commitments, total committed, commitments invoiced, open commitments, total costs. So a lot of information here, 
lot of information here for you and you'll be able to scroll and see everything from the totals down at the bottom you can also refresh it if you want you know if you think an entry was made in real time you can refresh it and see that new entry as well also something to point out what's nice about these reports too is you'll frequently see add to dashboard right here and let's say you catch yourself running a report a few times a week and decide you know what i'd rather just have this on my dashboard good news you click add to dashboard button and you'll be able to then put it onto your designated dashboard. You pick the area you want it, save it, boom, you're good. All right, and now I'd like to show my <clears throat> estimate versus actual report. So what's nice about this report is for those of you on that are current Sage 300 CRE users, this is a very similar report that you're used to inside of Sage 300 CRE, uh, or the cost spreadsheet. So we built this was built for our intact instance because you know we wanted to mimic that report because it's so heavily used in sage uh, 300 cre and what this is doing for me is it's going to show it uh group cost codes individual cost codes and then our estimate actual variance and then break that out by cost type so labor materials contract equipment other and overhead so this is a very heavily used report as i mentioned and uh, people are very happy with this. There is a way, again, to give quick indicators with the red font to you know, attract your eyes to see that. So we can see that concrete forms are actually not performing as well as we want to. So now I can figure out why that is the case. And this will be for all projects total. You know, it'll show for all projects. It'll total it out for the project here. So really nice. We're very happy to have this report inside of our intact instance. All right. So moving forward, what we'll do now is we're actually going to go into or we'll go into a, another dashboard. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll pull up the controller dashboard. So what's nice about the controller dashboard is it's going to give me some really good accounting information. I'll be able to see the revenue by revenue for the month, my accounts receivable for the month, accounts payable, gross profit, operating expenses. Obviously, we got five green arrows up that's a wonderful sign and then also i can see my profit and loss by some you know summary we can then break this out by location so as you if you remember i have the beaverton san jose tacoma locations so i could break this out by location and then we can also pull up our balance sheet uh, or sorry profit and loss detail balance sheet detail and then also an ar aging by project i could see all of this too we can then quickly filter other report, you know, other dashboards here, go to a cash analysis or financials ratios view. Uh, you are able to set parameters over who can access these report, you know, who can access these, who cannot. So it's very easy to set up audience views inside of the software. Next, what we'll do is we're going to go into a project. So we'll pull up a project here and we will go into the Five Oaks storage. So here I am inside of the Five Oaks storage, <clears throat> inside of my Five Oaks storage project. This is where we'll have all the project info, you know, name, customer, description, things like that. This is where we'll put in the address for the project. So we can have a specific contact where their address is going to be. The, the ship to contact is job, job address, and then bill to. So, you know, if those are going to be different, if you're going to have, be different, good news, it can be flexible and you can have it set that way. Also, you can have, we do, we do support sub jobs as well. So if we needed to select a parent job for this, we could select the parent job and then make sure that the two are invoiced together. So really nice feature there. Also, who's my product manager? We were able to set that here. We we're able to set that here from the project level as well. <clears throat> Inside of the additional info tab, we'll have the, uh, be able to set the billing so uh, it's going to be due upon receipt, fixed fee billing, what my contract amount is. And then we have the, you know, the dimensions. So what's beautiful about the dimensions are dimensions allow you to have one chart of accounts. And then for all your entities, all numbers can be the same. And then with dimensions, what you're able to do is actually tag transactions to specific areas of your business. So, you know, you no longer need to have, you know, one, one set of books for one entity and one for the other. Uh, that's not, you know, you don't need to do that. There's no more having to log in and log out of each, you know, if you're a Sage 100 contractor user with multiple entities, 
and you have to you know, log out of one company into the other. We can do the intercompany transactions. It's a really nice, really nice feature and allows for the quick tagging of transactions to make sure they go into the right locations. Also, you can track documents. There's attachments throughout the software. It supports all attachment types. We'll then go to project summary. So the project summary is nice because this will give me my full financial summary. You know, tell me all of my costs that have been incurred and then my budget summary, as well as hours and employees. I can then see my cost codes. So I can see all the cost codes that are, uh, you know, that are on this project. Which is the second page, it's a fairly large project but then the estimate. So from here inside of our estimate, this I can see all the cost code breakdown, the cost type breakdown, and then the actual amount breakdown for all of this. So able to see all this information from my estimate where we would set it here. And then even I could see change orders that had come in or change requests that have been uh, approved and submitted, approved and submitted that are on the, you know, that are on this project. Something else to point out is if you do jobs that are very similar, there's this duplicate button. You'll see this throughout the software as well. So if you do similar projects routinely, great news. You just click duplicate, it'll duplicate the entire project. Now you'll have to make the changes obviously for the customer and things like that, unless it's the exact same customer, but you know, address, dates, things like that, you'll want to change, but it pulls everything else in. So it can really save you a lot of time on the you know, data entry standpoint from there. Also for our projects, we'll need to set up project contracts. So we're gonna leave that and we will go into a project contract. So this is my five oak storage again. So just to you know, stay in the same area, we'll have our project contract here. So contract name, which contract we're gonna tie to, the date, description, so on and so forth. What's the project contract ID type? Uh, you know, is it fixed, backlog, GMP, T&M? Status, if we had any attachments, things like that. Architect, civil engineer, landscape architect. Summary, and then our project contract line. So what, you know, what items, what items went into this contract, tracking the retainage, all of that, setting the retainage, that is all that fun stuff for our contracts. Then on this second tab, you'll have the billing details. So on the billing details, this is where we'll get a full summary of the entire contract. So we'll be able to see what we'll be able to see what was billed, the percent that we billed thus far, percent billed net retainage, if we've released any retainage, total retainage held, retainage balance, balance to bill, so on and so forth. You're able to see all this information, last billing application number, and then you can see all of the bills. So all the our invoices that were created for this project for this project contract, and then all of the payments that correspond that are corresponding to each. So really, what you want to see is you want to make sure that these add up, you know, these match, so that you know you know that you've been paid in full. Now, obviously, we can then click in here. So if I go to if I go to this invoice, the software is already going to let me know that yes, it was paid with the you know the paid stamp here, and then also with the check, I can see that information right from you know right from here as well. But this is a nice feature. This was added in a recent release, um, having all the invoices and payments right on the project contract. So people are very happy about this, makes it really nice, very easy. So, you know, those using Sage 100 Contractor who are used to being able to see invoices and things like that very quick and easily, you've got that now inside of our, inside of our Sage Intact. We'll also go into change requests. So as you can see here, I got a few different change requests that are a few different change requests inside of my inside of my solution. We've got everything from uh, you know something that's been submitted, approved, and we have some contingency change orders as well. So we'll be able to see this, and you can actually see how it ties to the project. And then you can see which contract it's going to be tied to as well. So you know we're able to tie this to multiple areas able to tie it to multiple areas and the one that I want to pull up is this one 
So now this is subcontract change order. It's for my specialties, subcontract item. And it's also, we also, when I did show that on the estimate, we would see this because it has been approved and posted. So I can see this, uh, you know, I can see this on my estimate as well. So that's the really nice piece about these change orders is we're hitting a lot of different areas with them. We're gonna hit the project, we're gonna hit the project contract, we're gonna hit the estimate. So it's really nice with these change with these change requests. And then what happens with the change request is it gets flipped to a change order. So this way you can have a bit of a workflow around change management. So then we could have this, have the change request that comes through. And then once we approve it, flip it to a change order. And this is what the change order is. So the change to plan, add canopy cover to open air parking spaces. And uh, what the change request type was, it was approved. And then we could see the you know, total cost and then the total price. So we'll actually, you know, it's cost is 22,000, price is 26,000. So we're gonna, you know, $4,000 margin set in there, which is what's nice about this because when we did the change request, we put in the $4,000 price markup and that's what gave us the 26,000 for this. Then if I go to the, if I wanna go to my estimate here, I would be able to see the $22,000 for the approved change that we're gonna have in here. Again, you can have attachments in here. We'd be able to see all of those. And if we wanted to print or email this out, we could print or email it out, things like that. If you're using, if you're using a product management solution in the field and you're not necessarily doing all of your project management inside of your accounting software, Good news is Sage and Tech does have an open API and integrations with multiple products. So this information can just flow through from the field to accounting, to Intact, uh, very easily via that integration. So something to think about. Next, what we will do is we are going to go into purchasing. So now what we'll do is just to show you what a purchase order is going to look like. This is my PO screen. Uh, again, this is going to be very similar for those of you that are using Sage 100 Contractor, but instead of the bottom left where you, you, know, you would be able to see invoices and whatnot, that are tied to your PO, it's actually gonna be here in the history tab. So whenever you see the history, that's where you're gonna be able to go and see it. What's nice about it, you'll see both invoices. So very similar to Stage 100 Contractor in that aspect that directly from a purchase order, I can see the invoices that are tied, the AP invoices that are tied to it. But this is what our PO screen is going to look like. And this is what the entries look like. So it'll show us the cost codes that it's gonna to go to and then the items that are a part, you know, that are a part of each line. And what's nice is you'll see quantity converted over there. What quantity converted really means is what's been received thus far. So, you know, if we're doing, if we have partial conversions, that means we had partially received some items and we'd be able to correlate that with the invoices as well. So as you can assume, well, as you know, as you see here, this has all been fully received against, but on my history tab, I did have multiple invoices. So then I could actually drill into the invoices and see what quantities were a part of each, each invoice. All right, and what else? The last piece I would like to talk with everybody about, well, two other things. So when it comes to reporting, I mentioned that at Ethos Systems, we have created you know, reports for clients and whatnot. But what I like to actually show is the reports that we have created for people. So give me one second here, just so everybody can get an idea of everything that we have done. Sorry, folks. This is what I want to show right here. 
All right. So just to give you an idea, these are just some of the reports that we've created for our clients over the years uh, for their intact instances. And, you know, we are we are building reports for people uh, consistently and we're able to add them to people's instances. Also, if you have specific reports that you know you live by, what we ask is that you provide them to us and then we can, you know, my guess is we probably already have one that's very similar to that. So you'll be able to just use that. Or if it needs to fit exactly how you would like it and we need it to be custom for you, great news. We have an awesome group of consultants that can do that for you. No problem. Also, this was a slide that I talked about. And this was a slide that I talked about in our webinar last week where we compared Sage 300 CRE to Intact. But I still want to bring this up as the alerts functionality. So the alerts functionality inside of Intact is incredibly powerful, and it's built into the product. It's similar to Sage 100 Contractor, but dare I say, better than. What's nice about it, what's nice about our alerts function, what's nice about the alerts functionality inside of here is it can be you can use your own language, you can use your own language for the alerts, and you can go ahead and uh, give me a second. I'm going to pull one up. Why is it not pulling up here for me? The top level. Love when this happens live and you have to do this. There we go. All right. So there's smart events and there's smart rules. If everyone's still with me, smart events and smart rules. So what's nice about this is so we can view this. So it's a project estimate entry. It's via an API. And then you can actually see what exactly this is going, what exactly is going to go into this. Now, if you're, again, you're probably going to look at this, it's going to look like gibberish to you, but what's nice about it is as you get used to the software, this will start to make more sense. You can also then have smart rules as well. So these ones are a little bit more straightforward. So like validating insurance expiration date for a subcontractor or subcontract conversion type. So that's the nice thing about these. So like when their insurance is expiring, which many people are used to when they're, you know, if you're dealing with subcontractors, the software is going to alert you. It's also going to warn you. You'll have that. If you, if an invoice over a certain amount of money, a certain amount of dollars comes in and it needs to be seen by a specific individual, that can be set up. If an invoice on this project from this vendor comes in, it needs to go to this person for approvals. It could be set that way. So alerts are just a really cool, really powerful tool that I always want to make sure that I do talk about. And then the last piece of this presentation is going to be talking about are about payroll. So payroll has been there is payroll that has been released for Intact. I took some, I got screenshots for everybody here, and this is mainly, you know, it's a full payroll module. But I like to focus on the union aspect because if you're dealing with union payrolls, you know what that looks like and you know how difficult that can be. So I like to show from that aspect. Now this is an employee master showing an employee assigned to a home local of 729 Boilermakers. So Danny Grant, he's in 729, he's an apprentice, and we're able to set that there. You could then show the union local 424 Boilermakers as the union site on the job. So he's 729 and we have local 424 Boilermakers for this project. For the Boilermakers, you can also see the electric, electrical, electricians, geez, the electrician local that's on there. And then also painters local that's on there. And we can then set reciprocity rules for local 729 to local 424. You can set your union compensation tables. And then I like to show this for, you know, the employee payroll calculations. So we can show you, I know it's a little grainy, so sorry for that, but we can show you exactly the earnings, the deductions, the taxes, the net, and then for the company. 
this information, what's nice about it is because of the payroll module, real quick, because of the payroll module, you can, there's time entry options for you. You can use the intact time entry option. You can use an out, outside time entry option that we'd be happy to talk you through with and talk about the options that there are. And then that goes into the payroll module and we're able to process it that way, hit your projects, so on and so forth. Well, that's all I had today uh, for our quick, you know, for this quick walkthrough. If you have any questions whatsoever, please get in touch with us. Send an email over to sales at ethosystems.com and we'll be able to assist you, uh, schedule demos, anything like that. Oh, excuse me. And yeah, it looks like we didn't have no questions. All right. So not sure how to take that. Don't know if it's a good thing or a bad thing. So uh, if you do have questions, didn't want to type them in, please feel free to send an email over to sales at ethosystems.com. We'll be more than happy to help you. Also subscri subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we are putting out content routinely. So please subscribe to that. Check our website, check our blog, but uh, the YouTube channel is where we like to put a lot of our content as well. So thanks everybody. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.